So Framer as a website builder is mighty powerful, but what if it could be even more powerful? In this video, we're gonna run through my top five Framer tools to use in your next project so you can build even more advanced websites. Let's go. So the first tool you can use is something called Framer Overrides, which is a website that has all these overrides and code components that you can add to any project inside of Framer. Now, if you're not aware, an override is essentially a bit of code that you paste into your Framer project that overrides any frame on the canvas. So for example, here we are inside of Framer and I'm just gonna draw a new frame. Now, if I go back to Framer overrides here, I can find an override that I wanna use. And there's heaps here. We've got one that we can skew any layer with. So let's try that. And all we're going to do is copy this override here. And then we're going to go back to Framer and we're going to select this frame. And we're going to go down to code overrides and we're going to create a new file and we'll call this skew. And we're going to make sure it's an override. And then all we need to do is paste the code from Framer overrides here. And when we go back to our frame here, we're just going to select the file skew and make sure the override is set to with skew. So when I preview this, you'll notice that my frame is now skewed. And again, there are heaps to explore here. So I highly recommend going to over to Framer Overrides and taking a look. Okay, next we have Framer Commerce, which essentially allows you to take any Framer site and plug it into Shopify and make those two tools talk to one another. So you could have the front end of your Shopify website on Framer, and you can design it to be pixel perfect, but the entire backend would still be managed by Shopify. So you still get all of those e-commerce features. And looking at their site, like you can basically do everything, like all the product data syncs, which is really cool. Meaning if you make a change in Shopify, it will automatically sync across to your Framer project. You can add a cart, you can have checkouts, and they've got some really cool templates on here as well. Now, the only downside I would say is it's probably a little bit expensive, but this does come with a template. So it's probably relatively easy to set up. And if you are looking for that solution, that's a little bit more custom where you can sell your products, especially physical products. And this looks like a great solution. Okay, next we have Fenty, which allows you to build web apps and memberships on top of your Framer site. It essentially allows you to add authentication, lock pages, and even collect payments all three go frame sites. Okay, so here we are inside the Fenty dashboard and it's pretty easy to set up. All we kind of need to do is configure some of these details here. We can set up things like plans. So for example, if we wanted to create a subscription service like DesignJoy, where someone can actually subscribe to our design services at a monthly cost, we could actually set up a plan here. So let's create a new plan and let's call it a recurring plan. So that means it's gonna be billed recurringly and let's call it design unlimited. And let's set the price to this to be $4,999. And we're gonna make it so it's billed every month. And the great thing about Fenty is it connects directly to my Stripe account. So I don't have to worry about payment processing fees like Lemon Squeezy that take 5%. Like everything's done through Stripe. So all I have to pay is the Stripe processing fees. And what's cooler about this, it's not just some like iframe that you embed on your website, like everything actually works as a component. For example, if I take this sign up component here and you see there's so many different options we can choose from. And let's say if we pasted that inside our project, you'll notice we've got this new component here called Fenty form. And we could change this form to be a login link, a register link, or even a reset password. And because everything's built as these components, it means we can actually style these as well. Which which means I can tweak the styling to match the look and feel of my website, which makes it feel really, really native. So this means I can build web apps or membership sites inside a framework that actually are native. It's really powerful. Okay, so the fourth tool I wanna share with you is Framer Forms, which lets you add custom forms to your Framer sites. So the really powerful thing about this, which is built by yours truly, is that instead of going to my Framer project and searching for this input field here and only being restricted to a service and one input field, I can actually have unlimited input fields. Meaning even if I wanna do things like multi-step forms or have just multiple fields for different information, like maybe one for a message and one for a name and one for an email, one for a phone number, I can do this really easily now with Framer Forms. And we've actually been working on this new version, which is the first time I'm actually showing it here with all these different inputs. And it's really simple to actually 
actually add these. So all I need to do is copy this component here and I can change the form field to any sort of type that I want. So let's say if we wanted it to be a time block, we could do it like so. And again, similar to the last product, everything's built as components, which means I can style this however I want. And the other benefit is I can send this information to anywhere. So for example, if I want to use Zapier, which is a tool that allows you to automate multiple apps together, I could actually send all my form data to Zapier and then that could send it to an email. It could be sent to a Slack message. The possibilities are endless. Again, this is a bit of a shameless plug, but this is a new version that we're working on. It may or may not be out by the time you're watching this video. So I would recommend heading over to frameforms.com anyway to check it out. And even if you get the older version, it's still a lifetime plan. So that means you'll automatically get upgraded to any updates in the future. And the last integration I wanna share with you is adding Google Analytics to your Framer site. Now, by default, the analytics inside of Framer do a pretty good job and they visualize it in a pretty good way. But if you actually want to go a little bit more detail oriented in terms of tracking all your data that comes through your website and what pages people are visiting or where they're visiting from, in your general site settings, go down to Google Analytics and all you want to do is paste this ID here. And once you've done that, you can start tracking your website with Google Analytics. If you want more Framer content like this, consider subscribing to the channel because we put out more Framer content every single week. Until next time, I'll catch you later.